Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I made a video after the uh, Adonis Stevenson win over Fonfara yesterday where in the video I talked about Stevenson style versus Vladimir Klitschko style and I also talked about Stevenson style in reference to Manny Pacquiao style. Let's talk about it just a little bit further. I understand I'm getting a lot of criticism here online. That's fair. It comes with being online. But first, I believe it's important to look at Stevenson vis-a-vis -vis Vladimir Klitschko because both were trained by Emanuel Stewart. And right now the popular folklore in boxing, in fact you saw it at the beginning of the Stevenson fight. They actually had a little video clip of Emanuel Stewart saying that he didn't see how anyone could beat Adonis Stevenson. Right? The folklore is that Emanuel Stewart has taught Stevenson all he knows. That Stevenson is your prototypical Emanuel Stewart protege. And that Stevenson is blessed with all of the advantages that Emanuel Stewart gave his protégés. I beg to differ. I know it's unpopular. I understand Stevenson is the reigning Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year, right? The last award they gave out was for 2013, and it was Adonis Stevenson, and he did have a spectacular year. But understand, style-wise, we're going to blur weight classes in this video. Style-wise, Stevenson doesn't come close to Vladimir Klitschko. And keep in mind, I personally believe that someone with, right, a, we'll call it a Sean Porter type of style, could be Klitschko on his best day. I think Alexander Povetkin has a Sean Porter style. He self-destructed when he fought Klitschko. But understand that Klitschko can pace himself. He has one of boxing's best jabs. Understand the jab is really with his non-dominant hand, right? Klitschko's right-handed. That jab is a left-hand jab. Klitschko still has very heavy ammunition in his right hand. So if you're fighting Vladimir Klitschko, understand Vladimir Klitschko can win what I call the slow rounds. If not a lot of actions going on, if neither of you is jumping around the ring, Vladimir Klitschko in slow motion with not a lot of action going on can keep you busy. You're trying to dodge that jab. It's you know, always in your face. It's like a drum, right? So Klitschko himself can conserve energy because he's behind a guard and he's keeping you busy and he's setting up distance without having to move much, right? So opponents start to get desperate. They start to lunge in. This is without Klitschko, who is a great athlete, having to move his legs a lot. So Vladimir Klitschko, one of boxing's premier knockout artists, very high KO ratio, right, is able to make it to the later rounds without looking winded, without being exhausted. Now understand, he has had to lift his game himself, because if you go back to the Lehman Brewster fight, he was exhausted in that fight. The goal is to pace yourself so that you're winning rounds, but you're also conserving energy. Right? Now, let's compare and contrast that to Adonis Stevenson. I understand Stevenson, southpaw, throws a right jab on occasion. 
It's not remotely in the area code of Vladimir Klitschko's right jab. It's just not. Stevenson, like Manny Pacquiao, Stevenson to me is more of a Freddie Roach fighter. We'll even blend in styles of trainers here. Then he is an Emmanuel Stewart fighter. Right? When I think Stewart, I'm thinking Hitman Hearns, Lennox Lewis, Vladimir Klitschko. Right? To create distance between himself and his opponent, Stevenson uses his legs. He doesn't use the pile driver jab. Right? He's not battering you with the jab Hearns used, or Lewis, or Klitschko. He's actually dancing around, trying to create distance that way. Now, part of it is physical. Hearns, Lewis, Klitschko, they're all tall men with reach, right? So they could keep you at the end of a jab, and there's a height and length dynamic there. Adonis Stevenson, I believe, is much shorter for his weight class. He's like 5'11 or something like that. So he doesn't have the height of a Klitschko to shoot a jab and keep you several feet away. But understand, there's a consequence for Stevenson dancing around the ring. He gets tired. Same thing with Manny Pacquiao. Right? Same thing with Manny Pacquiao. Now... Let's just say this. Pacquiao went through a stretch in his career where he didn't get tired in fights. Right During that stretch, Alex Ariza was part of his team. Right, I'm not drawing any conclusions from it, but let's just state the facts. Freddie Roach has called Alex Ariza shady. There was at least one occasion when there were negotiations for a big fight. And Manny Pacquiao's team decided they didn't want drug testing. Right? Now Alex Ariza has left Pacquiao's team. I would argue that Pacquiao, due to age, nutrition, whatever, doesn't have the same stamina that he once did. Right now, let's get back to that Stevenson Klitschko comparison. Understand that Adonis Stevenson uses his legs a lot like Manny Pacquiao, much more than Vladimir Klitschko. I believe Stevenson's style is much more tiring than Vladimir Klitschko's style. Understand both men are close in age. Even though Stevenson has just recently emerged on the world stage as a professional, he's in his mid-30s. Right? Understand, neither guy is in their 20s. So while I consider both to be elite athletes, I don't believe Vladimir Klitschko has to work as hard in the ring as Adonis Stevenson, right? I believe Manny Pacquiao, with the same type style, jumping around the ring to set up straight left hands from distance, right? Even the body shots are left hands, straight, right? Even the body shots. I believe Manny Pacquiao has blinded us to just how tiring that fight style is. Men in their mid-30s have a problem jumping around the ring for 12 rounds. It gets tiring, right? So, let me also say this too. Stevenson is predominantly a left hand. <clears throat> yes, there is a right hand hanging from his right shoulder. Yes, there is a moment in the Fonfaro fight where he hits Fonfaro with a nice right hand. He can get a right hand going from time to time. But that's qualitatively different, in my opinion, than a two-handed fighter who 
is going to take whatever you give him. So when you look at Vladimir Klitschko, right again, another Emmanuel Stewart disciple. Vladimir Klitschko has had fights where he has finished guys with left hands. I mentioned the Ray Austin fight. Forget that fight for a second. Look at the ending of the Eddie Chambers fight. Right? You're talking about a guy who can drop you with his non-dominant hand. So I'm already getting pulverized by Klitschko's left jab. Then Klitschko can come in and close the show with a left hook. Right? Another guy with this fight style, by the way, in fact, some would argue his best punch is his left hook. Put me among them. It's Saul Alvarez. Same type thing. With Canelo, you're dealing with a two-handed fighter. Right? So I can't just leave the neighborhood of his left hand and think I'm safe. I believe you can do that with Adonis Stevenson. Right? So not only is his style more tiring than, let's say, Vladimir Klitschko's style, it's much more one-handed. Right? It's much more one-handed. And so, to me, he has problems. Let me go one step further. I mentioned Sean Porter earlier, and I'm, I don't mean to pick on fighters. I'm just talking about fighters with distinctive styles, right? Sean Porter's two-handed. You'll notice when Sean Porter is outside, right? Porter likes to be outside. Then he'll jump in. Think Porter against Paulie Malinaji, a guy with an excellent jab. Right, Porter was able to destabilize Malinaji, a long jabber like Vladimir Klitschko. I understand Malinaji doesn't hit like Klitschko. I'm just saying a guy who forces you to deal with his jab. Right, and I also know Malinaji moves a lot more than Vladimir Klitschko. But when Porter was able to time the jab and jump in over it, Sean Porter could throw hooks with both hands. Porter's devastating inside. In other words, Porter's two-handed, and when he gets inside, whatever Porter has otherwise, right? Good long punches and stuff. When Porter gets inside, he has a short game, right? Let's give it a name. When he's up on you, he can batter you up close. You're getting hit with hooks, and they have pop, right? Does Stevenson, I think it's an open question, does Stevenson have a short game? That left hand is devastating from distance. Up close, not so much. I'll agree, Manny Pacquiao has a short game. When Pacquiao's up close, he can throw punches in bunches. Right? I'll agree with that. But Stevenson looks a little bit more limited than that to me. Right? Stevenson looks like his entire design is to set up long lefts. And they're straight. The point I'm making is, at the high level of the sport, the guys I mentioned, right? Andre Ward. Bernard Hopkins, I would say those guys are among the very best in the sport pound for pound. All I'm saying is, if they are fighting a guy who they know is one-handed, who they know is more straight left than hooks, who they know keeps his hands a little bit low, and if you can jump the fence and get close to them, they aren't defensively gifted, right? The uh, key sequence for me isn't even the knockdown that Fonfara gets against Stevenson. It's right before the knockdown. Look how exposed Stevenson is. As I said in the earlier video, 
Fanfara didn't have to throw that punch through a tight window. This isn't Deontay Wilder landing on Malik Scott, right? This isn't a tight window. This is the whole window. Stevenson is defenseless to that straight right hand, right? He's been jumping around the ring. When he gets tired, his defense against right hands evaporates. Now, you know, both Ward and Hopkins are 12-round card players, right? They're there to give you problems the entire fight. Bernard Hopkins typically just gives away the first two rounds. Right? His goal is to figure you out so later in the fight he can do what he did to Beboot Shumanov. He actually dropped Shumanov later in the fight. All I'm saying is guys like that are going to force Stevenson to use his legs early. They're going to force Stevenson to tire himself out. Right? Keep in mind, Stevenson's much older than Andre Ward. Right? Boxing is a young man's game. If Stevenson tires himself out, then in the middle rounds, is open to right hands, like he was against Funfara, I think he's going to have a very hard time. A very hard time. Right? So, just food for thought. The Emanuel Stewart stamp of approval does mean a lot. But Stevenson reminds me more of Manny Pacquiao than he does Hearns, Lewis, or Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Those guys, Thomas Hearns, as big a puncher as he was, and he was a huge puncher, could batter you to death with that jab. Understand, Thomas Hearns didn't even have to get close to you. To land that jab. Look at the Hearns Duran fight. If you want to see Duran get destroyed, that's the footage. And what you're going to see is Thomas Hearns, before he lowers the hammer, is battering Duran with a battering ram jab. But Hearns himself is not moving that much. Right? That's the beauty of Stewart's style at his best. I believe Stewart tailored a style uniquely suited to Adonis Stevenson that involves jumping around the ring. But if Stevenson doesn't get the KO, he's going to be in trouble. Let me make another point too. In terms of Stevenson's defense having lapses at times, understand that Darnell Boone knocked down, and I understand Darnell Boone knocked down a lot of guys, Kovalev, um, I think he might have knocked down Ward. I'm not sure. I'd have to check on that. The uh, point, though, is that knockdown where Stevenson gets hit flush, that's in the second round, folks. That's in an early round. Right? That's the problem. Right? Stevenson has defensive lapses, tires from a tiring fight style. It's been hidden because he's been stopping Tavares Cloud, Chad Dawson. Right now we're in the part of the water where you have a guy like Bernard Hopkins who hasn't been stopped for decades. Good luck trying to knock out Bernard Hopkins. You have a guy, Andre Ward, who look at Ward's history closely. This guy was the number one rated amateur fighter. This guy's unbeaten as a pro, right? Andre Ward has not lost for years. And I'm talking about since, I believe, his early teens or something like that, right? Don't you think Stevenson's at risk of being deconstructed later in fights against fighters like that? Let me also say this about Kovalev. Kovalev is more complicated than you think, right? His trainer, John David Jackson, is one of the premier trainers in the sport. 
The guy who's second in his corner, Don Turner, used to train Evander Holifield when Holifield ruled the roost. Right? Turner is one of the best teachers of jabs in the sport of boxing. The one thing I know about Kovalev is that he's excellent at distance and he's two-handed. Kovalev's another guy who can knock you out with either hand. He hits hard and he can throw volume. If you're a Donna Stevenson fan, just understand he too is a very troublesome matchup for your fighter. I don't want to rain on the parade. I know Stevenson is very popular in Canada. I saw the crowd at the Bell Center yesterday. I understand he is the reigning Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. Right? But all I'm saying is boxing is rock, paper, scissors. Styles make fights. In fact, styles can make winners. I believe there's certain styles that would give Stevenson all he can handle. Even now, as he's on a streak that has gotten him Fighter of the Year recognition. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me say this about Sean Porter before I lose the thought. Porter's style is exactly the kind of style that can give the technicians, right? Hearns, Lewis, Vladimir Klitschko, all kinds of problems. Because a guy who can move right, who can come in low, who can time an entry point, use the jab against a jabber, so in between the jabs, can leap in with a short game and volume, or can get underneath with a body attack, underneath the guy's jab. That kind of style can beat even the great style of a Lewis or a Vladimir Klitschko. Let me hear from you. It would have been great to see not past his prime Mike Tyson, but to see 1988 Mike Tyson against Lennox Lewis. Would have been a whale of a fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.